أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إلى الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنت عليهم غير المكتوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله is the uh, sheer mercy and grace of Allah تعالى Number one, that he created us as human beings. Number two, he created us as the Ummah of Ras- within the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number three, he has given us the tawfiq to all of us to seek knowledge in different ways. And number four, he has given us the tawfiq to participate in this halqa of ta'aleem. May Allah Ta'ala continue to give us tawfiq until death to seek him, actually. The goal of all these efforts, whether it is his worship or fulfilling the obligation towards his creation, or whether it is to seek knowledge, zikr, tilawat, tasbihat. But if you did not get the world, But you got me, you got everything. So getting Allah is getting everything, even if we do not possess anything of the world. One moment after another, one day after another, one month after another, one year after another, passing by from our lives. never to come back, slipping away from our lives, never to come back. We cannot hold time, but we can make time valuable by remembering Allah through our connection with the Almighty, we can make time valuable for eternity. Otherwise, time will slip by. And shaitan will deceive us. And the world will attract us and destroy us. And our nafs will always try to pressurize on us to pursue a path away from the path of Allah. And we have to constantly make effort to save ourselves from shaitan who uses dunya and our base instincts, desires to take us away from the straight path. We need the help of Allah in this journey of life to reach him. You know, after dealing with the deceptions of shaitan for the last few weeks and putting together presentations for you. As I look back to my life, I can better understand why I did so many things in my life that I should not have done. What was the role of shaitan in all of that? And when I look at the lives of people that I came across in lives, I can better understand why they did so many things that they should not have done. And as I look back at historical figures, I can better understand why they did the things that they did. The conquests and the killings and the destruction of conquerors like Alexander, like Chinggis Khan, like Taimur, like Hitler, like Napoleon. Why did they did the mass destruction and the mass murders through the ages? I've just named a few of them, but there are so many of them. Possessed by shaitan, possessed by their nafsaniyat, possessed by 
worldly ambitions by the world. May Allah protect us. May Allah protect the present day pursuers of the of the world and, and possessed by shaitan. The subsections we covered in the last three Sundays are wisdom behind creation of shaitan, devil's deception in five steps, shaitan cannot force mankind to commit sins, you can defeat shaitan. So that was uh, three Sundays ago and two Sundays ago, or actually uh, the last Sunday, I would say, uh, tactics of shaitan. Shaitan is ind indefatigable, indefatigable, gradual deception to shirk, exploiting weaknesses of a person, three sources of waswas, whisperings, types of waswas, punishment for waswas, shaitan makes false appear attractive, beautify sinful action between man and woman, negligence and exaggeration, making statement about Allah without knowledge, makes false promises and raises high hopes, causes people to forget commandments of Allah, fate of shaitan and followers. And last Sunday, we started means prescribed in Quran and Sunnah to dispel shaitan. Last Sunday, we started it and uh, we hope to finish it today. And then uh, dispelling shaitan, some more thoughts on that and do's and don'ts in the Quran. So these two will be next, next Sunday. And uh, after that, as uh, Tawheed suggested, uh, we have to summarize. We have to summarize because this took us 10 weeks, 10 halkas so far, and today will be the 11th one. Next week would be the 12th one. So we have to summarize, otherwise, you know, there's too much of information. So continuing with uh, seeking refuge with Allah, we started with A and we went up to, up to IJK P, Q, P, Q, 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 and this is R. Reciting the Quran with raised voice drives away shaitan. Once Rasulullah at night walked by the house of Abu Bakr anhu, and he saw that he was praying, but in a soft voice. And uh, very soon he walked by the house of Umar anhu, and he found that he was praying and he was pay, uh, praying with a raised voice. And when the three met, Rasulullah said, Abu Bakr, I went by your house and you were reciting the Quran in a soft voice. And Abu Bakr who replied, I was reciting the Quran in my salah in such a voice that the one for whom I was reciting, he could hear me. And Rasulullah said, Omar, I walked by your house and you were reciting the Quran in a raised voice. And Omar replied, I wanted to wake up my neighbors by reciting the Quran in a rather high pitch voice. And I wanted to drive away shaitan. So those were my two reasons for reciting the Quran in a raised voice. Wake up others. Number two, dispel or keep away shaitan. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Omar, sorry, Abu Bakr, you should recite a little higher, in a voice a little higher. And Omar, you should recite in a voice that is little lower. Oh, here it is actually. The Prophet then said, oh, Abu Bakr, raise your voice somewhat. And he said to Omar, lower your voice somewhat. The first part I said from my side, the near meaning, but this is what he said towards the end. Raise your voice to Abu Bakr and lower your voice so you don't disturb those who are sleeping. I guess that's the, that's the idea. But at the same time, keeping away shaitan. 
Now, once I heard from a mufti that if somebody is sleeping and uh, we say assalamu alaikum to somebody else and the person who is sleeping, his sleep is disturbed. Then saying salam throughout our life will not be a kafara for causing him disturbance. Or if we, he also mentioned this, the mufti, that if we recite the Quran in a voice that somebody is sleeping and his sleep is disturbed, then our reciting the Quran, our whole life will not be a kafara for the harm that we, disturbance that we cause to the person who was sleeping. So he was saying, actually, by way of telling me that uh, most Muslims know kalima, namaz, roza, hajj, zakat to be Islam. Whereas this is one fifth of Islam, or even he mentioned that it is less than one fifth of Islam, meeting our obligation towards and not causing harm to anybody else, meeting our obligation towards fellow human beings and not harming them, causing them any harm is a big chunk of, of deal. So he was saying uh, by way of that. And uh, from this hadith, uh, the, the other thing that we get is what Rasulullah preached in so many different ways, moderation, or not taking extreme path, taking the middle path. So he's telling Umar one who don't raise your voice so much, and he's telling Abu Bakr who raise your voice a little bit. The, the next way through which we can seek refuge with Allah is, um, actually, the, 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 the reason as to why we don't get refuge when we seek refuge, the reason mentioned is that when somebody raises a sword against an enemy, the power of the sword is in direct proportion to the strength of the person raising the sword. If the hands are strong, then the sword will strike the enemy hard. Similarly, when somebody is seeking help from Allah, the help will, will depend on the fear of Allah in that person, the iman in that person. And in direct proportion to the internal condition of the person, the help of Allah will come. So let me read that. If seeking refuge is done by one who is pious and fears Allah, then it is like fire which burns the shaitan. But if it is done by one who is confused and weak in faith, in iman, then it will not have a strong impact on the enemy. So that should tell us why when we seek help from Allah, we may not get in the desired manner, or when we seek help from Allah against shaitan, why we may not get the help that we desire. So that is the end of section two. We were dealing with section two that goes from A through S, 19 subsections. Section three is keeping busy with zikr. That is one way to dispel shaitan. It is narrated in a hadith. It is narrated in a hadith that Allah commanded Yahya alayhi salam to enjoin five things upon the children of Israel. One of which was, I command you to remember Allah. And then it goes on. And then it says, for a man cannot save himself from his enemy except by means of zikr. And there's a saying of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the near meaning of which is, shaitan lies in wait for mankind like a mosquito lying in wait to bite a person. And for shaitan, whenever the person is forgetful of Allah, forgets to remember Allah, shaitan comes like a mosquito and injects poison into the person, injects poisonous thoughts into the person, whisperings. And again, when the person starts remembering Allah, he goes away. 
but he has done his job the moment we forget allah shei jonno bola hoy utte boshte allah ke shoron kori amra the karin of a believer who keeps his tongue wet with the remembrance of allah is very lean weak and hungry because the more the believer remembers his lord the more shaitan suffers and is tormented whereas the shaitan accompanying an evil doer who does not remember his lord rests in peace and is therefore strong and powerful and thus more capable of overcoming him imam ghazali gave this example that uh, when we remember allah when we obey allah we are feeding the soul and the soul becomes strong and the soul is like the rider of the horse and when the rider of the horse is strong the rider of the horse can take the horse to anywhere he wants to take but if the soul is weak then the nafs takes over the nafs becomes the rider of the horse and the nafs takes over and takes the horse to the undesired destination so remembering allah and worshiping allah is like feeding the soul or is feeding the soul that makes the soul powerful and is the rider of the body and takes the body to the desired destination the straight path narrated by abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu the shaitan of a believer met the shaitan of a disbeliever the latter was fat and well that means the shaitan of the disbeliever was fat and well clogged while the sh- shaitan of the believer was weak lean disheveled dust colored covered with dust hungry and naked the shaitan of the disbeliever asked the shaitan of the believer why are you so lean the shaitan replied i am accompanying a man who when he eats mentions allah allah's name so i remain hungry when he drinks he mentions allah so i remain thirsty when he wears his clothes he mentions allah's name so i remain naked when he puts oil in his hair he mentions allah's name and i remain disheveled then the shaitan of the disbeliever said but i am accompanying a man who never does any of the deeds which you mentioned and i share with him his food his drink his clothing the benefit of remembering allah standing sitting laying down in all conditions in traveling in going out of house in coming into the house Abul Mali reports that a man said I was behind the messenger and his riding animal stumbled I said may a shaitan perish and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do not say may shaitan perish if you say that he will grow in size until he becomes the size of a house and he says by my strength he becomes strong instead say in the name of allah bismillah when you say that he reduces in size until he is like a fly in other words mentioning allah rather than saying may shaitan perish because there is no mention of allah in saying that the fourth section sticking to jamaa adhere to the main body of the muslims that is the jamaa by living amongst believers and choosing righteous friends who will help him to do good praying in jama so that's why jama is so much extolled in islam the sulla sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever among you wants to attain the best part of paradise let him adhere to the main body of the muslims for the shaitan is with the one who is alone but is farther away from two and uh, from another narration of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which i mentioned in last week it is uh, said something to the effect that uh, that a single person a, for to shaitan is like a single sheep to a wolf a single sheep 
is an easy prey for the wolf. But when the sheep are in a pack, the wolf does not attack. Similarly, when Muslims are together, it is hard for shaitan to attack them. It should be noted that Jamaat counts for nothing if it does not adhere to the truth, that means the Quran and the Sunnah. So Jamaat has to hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah. Then the Jamaat or adhering to the Jamaat has value. Rasulullah is reported to have said, the people of the book who came before you split into 72 sects. And this nation will split into 73 sects. 72 will be in hell. And one will be in paradise. That is the Jamaah. A very fearsome statement from Rasulullah You have to pick the right Jamaah. Shaitan comes to you while you are praying and says, oh, this is the fifth section opposing the Shaitan, doing everything uh, opposite to what the Shaitan wants. If Shaitan comes to you while you are praying and says you are showing off, so cut your prayer short and make your prayer lengthy. Do just the opposite. If he infuses Riya when you are praying, say, this is for Allah. The reward will be doubled. In other words, when we are praying and somebody enters the room and the thought comes to our mind that this person will say, I am a good man. I should say at that point, this is for Allah. It is not for this person. The thought will come. Shaitan will always try to infuse showing off in our hearts. We should say to ourselves, this is for Allah the reward will be doubled. If he says, you have invalidated your wudu, say you are lying. Wudu does not get invalidated unless we are certain that our wudu has gone, our wudu has gone. We have to be certain. Just because of confusion, doubt, our wudu does not go away. If he says to you that the dead can hear you and benefit you or harm you, tell him you are lying. The dead cannot do any of these. Also, when we know that doing something or doing it in a specific way is from the characteristics of the shaitan, we should oppose him by doing it differently and follow the sunnah. For example, Rasulullah said, when any of you, when any one of you eats, let him eat with his right hand. And when he drinks, let him drink with his right hand. For shaitan eats with his left hand and drinks with his left, left hand, Muslim. And take a midday nap because the shayateen do not take a nap at midday. And we, we all know it is a fashion with the so-called educated class to drink or eat with the left hand. Somehow it has become a fashion. Sixth section, knowing his tricks and means of foiling. This is to know the plots of shaitan mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah and shaitan's conspiracies against the believers. He uses uh, dunya, he uses uh, our nafsaniyat, our base desires. So we have to know the reality of dunya, which we talked about. We have to know about our weaknesses, our frailties, our nafsaniyat, so that we can be aware about when and how shaitan might use these to derail us and destroy us. For example, how, the, how he tempts into committing sins distracts one in his prayer. He invariably comes in prayers. That's his most favorite time to come and infuse thoughts into us. When he cannot stop us from praying, we'll come and destroy our prayer. We have to be ever watchful, pay our fullest attention to prayer. 
so much so that he cannot come near us when he finds that we are fully engrossed in prayer it becomes difficult for him even then he tries whenever we lose our our uh, attention in prayer towards allah mono joke uh, you know it is said that uh, to the extent that we uh, are dedicated to prayer to that extent allah will be dedicated to us যতটা মনোযোগ আমরা দিব যে কোনো ইবাদতে ততটা মনোযোগ আল্লাহ তালা দিবেন যখনই আমাদের মনোযোগ কমে যাবে বা থাকবে না তখনই আল্লাহ তালার মনোযোগ আমাদের প্রতি থাকবে না মানে আল্লাহ রহমান আল্লাহর মার্সি আল্লাহর গাইডেন্স থাকবে না সো ইট ডিস্ট্রাক্টস ওয়ান ইন হিজ প্রেয়ার অ্যান্ড ফ্রম গুড ডিডস অল সর্টস অফ গুড ডিডস হাউ হি ট্রাইস টু মেক ওয়ান থিং দ্যাট হিজ উদু ইজ ইনভ্যালিডেটেড and and then we have to do wudu again when it is not invalidated and we might get tired of making wudu and how he plants discord between husband and wife that is one of his most favorite acts and how he instills doubts in a man's heart by whispering to him um thoughts like who created such and such who created such and such until he says who created your lord so when we talk about discord between husband and wife or discord between two muslims i'm reminded of this uh, a narration in which it is said that shaitan and iblis the shaitan in chief at the end of the day or during certain hours certain times he has darbar darbar gathering of shayateen and he asks them what have you done and what have you done and what have you done and somebody says i made somebody do zina fornication very good what have you done i made somebody tell a lie very good in this way he he asks everybody and they say i made such and such person do such and such act very good such and such person such and such act very good and then somebody says i made two people fight a husband and wife or any two muslims i made them fight shaitan gets overjoyed and asks him to sit by his side as a fighting can lead to so many things uh to killing even and when two muslims stop talking among each other they can remain in that condition up to 3 days 72 hours after 72 hours their book of deeds are not presented before allah their duas are not accepted by allah the two muslims stop talking and their their book of deeds are presented before allah allah taala says keep this book of deed by the side until they uh, they start talking with each other and allah taala waits for 72 hours for them to make amends to forgive each other and to start talking if they do not within those 72 hours then their duas are not accepted by allah and their book of deeds after that are not presented before allah so when i say this in other hal- or said this in other hal- halka people ask what if i try to talk and the other person doesn't try to talk if i try to make amends that is good for me even if the other person does not reciprocate as long as i am willing to talk i have made mistake or the other person has made mistake but i am willing to talk i am willing to make amends then i am safe one who recognizes these plots of shaitan so we have to recognize we have to recognize as i said earlier we spend so much time in in understanding our competitors when it comes to competition between two companies or when it comes to competition between two individuals we try to understand the Uh, tactics 
the strengths and weaknesses of the other party. But uh, we hardly give much thought to the presence of shaitan because he's invisible. He comes and goes, he enters our heart, our chest actually. He enters our chest, he infuses uh, e evil thoughts. He whispers, he makes us, indu he induces us to do um, acts of disobedience. And we don't realize it is from shaitan. As I said, I look back at my life and I can understand so many things better. Or look, at, look back at the lives of people in my lives and I can understand why they did certain things or why I did certain things. What was the possible role of shaitan in those things? And what I should have done in those circumstances. It makes us aware about our enemy and shaitan is the greatest enemy. We consider such and such person to be our, our greatest enemy, but shaitan is the greatest enemy who's using that person. Shaitan comes in the, uh, uh, inside uh, uh, possessing so many persons. When we recognize these plots and their remedies, we can effectively dismiss him and his whispers by implementing the sunnah of Allah's messenger. In other words, you know, this is a very profound statement made here, sunnah of Allah's messenger. Oh, that's a sunnah. Oh, that's a sunnah. You did not perform sunnah prayer. Oh, that's a sunnah. I have performed fard. Not re realizing the power behind every sunnah of Rasulullah not just in prayer, but also in how he conducted himself in his daily life, in using the bathroom, in using, uh, in eating, in sleeping, in drinking, in going out of the house, in coming into the house, all the sunnah of Rasulullah are so powerful in keeping shaitan at bay. We do not realize that. We say, oh, it was, it, it was a sunnah, it was just a sunnah. A dollar falls down, we pick it up. A sunnah we do not practice on, we are unconcerned. We are concerned about the dollar. We understand the value of dollar. We have dunya in our heart. I'm not meaning any particular person. I'm meaning mankind in general. And they have no value of sunnah. It's just a sunnah. In a Sahih Hadith, I think I may have mentioned it. It is mentioned, if at a time when people do not act on the Sunnah of Rasulullah if somebody enlivens, that means establishes a Sunnah of Rasulullah the person will get the reward of one battlefield martyr. One Sunnah of Rasulullah so much valued in the esteem of Allah. Because the person is valued. Do not understand the value of the person. So how do we act on his sunnah? We do not understand the might and power of the Almighty. The lack of Iman is at the root of all disobedience of Allah that is going on throughout the world. Act of corruption and bloodshed that is going on, lack of Iman. Not recognizing Allah, the might and power of the Almighty. And not recognizing the esteem of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that Allah created an angel who after creation went to Sejda. I may have mentioned this once. And he was in Sejda for hundreds of thousands of years. He had not seen the might and majesty of the Almighty. He went into Sejda right after creation and after hundreds of thousands of years, he, he raised his head. And when he saw around him the might and majesty of the Almighty, not the Almighty, but the might and majesty of the creation of the Almighty around him. He said, oh Allah, I could not make sujood to you equal to your might and majesty. 
and he was in sujood for hundreds of thousands of years. And we cannot be in sujood equal to the time that it takes to say Subhana Rabbi Al Allah three times. Because we do not have realization of the might and majesty of the Almighty. Repenting and seeking forgiveness. We were talking about knowing his tricks and means of filing. That, that, uh, that under, involves so much of knowledge. And, and some part of which we covered in the last uh, three halkas. Simply on shaitan. Repenting and seeking forgiveness when shaitan said to the Lord of glory, by your glory, O Lord, I will keep trying to misguide your slaves so long as their souls are in their bodies. I'll keep on trying to misguide your slaves. The Lord said, by my glory and majesty, I will continue to forgive them so long as they ask for my forgiveness. They will make mistakes. They will forgive me. You will inject poison into them. And they will commit sins. But as soon as they realize, and that realization is important, and they ask for my forgiveness, I will forgive them. You will keep on misguiding them. They will continue to, or whoever among them continue to ask for my forgiveness, I will continue to forgive them. Asking for forgiveness is so important. You know, shaitan asked for life until the day of judgment, until the last day. And shaitan, who disobeys Allah right in front of him, and not only that, not only that, he justifies his arrogance, his disobedience. And he makes dua to Allah, give me life until the last day. I will misguide your slaves. And I will prove to you that they were ungrateful. That means they will be disobedient. That is ungratefulness. Obedience is gratefulness. And disobedience is ungratefulness. So I will, I will um, show to you that they are uh, ungrateful. Allah Ta'ala accepted his dua. He worshipped Allah so much. Allah did not want to be to be ungrateful himself in terms of the worship of Allah. I shouldn't use the word ungrateful, but for lack of better word. Allah did not want to not recognize his worship. He accepted. And by the way, when he gave life to shaitan until the last day, he did, not, he did not do any favor to shaitan because the more opportunity Allah Ta'ala gives to shaitan to derail more people, the more sin he is accumulating. So by accepting his dua, and, and this, by the way, was an act of recklessness on the part of shaitan to seek life until the last day because uh, the more act of evil that he does in derailing more and more mankind, the more sin he is accumulating, the more will be his punishment. Somehow he doesn't recognize that. So thus shaitan prompts, thus prompt repent, uh, repentance, prompt repentance. We should be prompt in our repentance and turning to Allah. Whenever we fail and fall into one of shaitan's traps, enticements. Because if we don't, we are sure to destroy. And because that asking for forgiveness destroys the plan of shaitan. And, and, and uh, in relation to this, I'm reminded of uh, a tradition that when somebody commits a sin, Allah Ta'ala asks the angel on the left, Nekir, Munkar is on the right, writes good acts. <coughs> Allah Ta'ala asks him, do not write the sin. Wait. Wait for certain number of hours or certain period of time because my 
Abed might ask for forgiveness, in which case you will not write at all. And if within that time period, the Abed asks for Allah's forgiveness, then the angel on the left does not write, does not write down that act of disobedience or that, that uh, sinful act he committed. But if he does not ask for forgiveness within that time period, then the angel writes it down. But for one act of sin, one sin is written down. If somebody commits, if somebody does a virtuous deed, it is multiplied by 10. That's the mercy of Allah. We should be prompt in asking for forgiveness. We will be, we will be making mistakes. However learned we are, however pious we are, that is what makes us insan. The Sula Salaam said, if you had, we have we read this earlier, if we had, if you had not made, made mistakes and Allah Ta'ala had not forgiven, Allah likes to forgive. He, he likes us asking for forgiveness. And he likes to forgive. Now that's why that dua. Allahumma inna ka afuwan tuhibul afwa faafu anna faafu anni wallah. You love to forgive. Well, you forgive us. So we want uh, to, to foil the plan of shaitan. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, if you did not make mistake and Allah Ta'ala did not forgive you, then he would have created, he would have removed you and he would have created another nation who would have made mistake, asked for, asked for Allah's forgiveness, and Allah would have forgiven them. Adam alayhi salam disobeyed Allah, so did Iblis, but the former Adam alayhi salam repented and sought Allah's forgiveness, and Allah pardoned him while he cursed the latter, Shaitan, Iblis, and destined him to eternal fire. The difference between the two crimes is clearly apparent. After violating the command of Allah, the exalted Adam and Hawa alayhi salam, alayhi salam, did not justify their sin. Shaitan did justify his sin. Rather, after realizing that they had committed a sin by eating from the forbidden tree in paradise, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam admitted to their sin without delay. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. Well, please forgive us. Otherwise, we will be, we will be among the, the uh, ones who are harmed. They sought forgiveness. Oh, here is the meaning of the, of the verse. I forgot. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you forgive us not and bestow not upon us your mercy, we shall certainly be among the losers. Then Adam received from his Lord words and his Lord pardoned him, accepted his repentance. Verily, he is the one who forgives, accepts repentance, the most merciful. Iblis, however, did not confess his sin. He insisted on it, protested and argued with Allah, trying to justify his sinful act. He said that I'm made, uh, he's made of earth, mud, and I'm made of fire. And that fire, that fire, the quality of fire did not enable him to ask for forgiveness or did not make him submissive, created arrogance. So these come from the characteristics of fire, whereas based on the characteristics of mud from which Adam alayhi salam was created, he immediately sought forgiveness. And he submitted to the Almighty. So when one transgresses a limit set by Allah, he should admit it to be a sin and wrongdoing on his part and not try to justify his faults. Like for example, those who deal in riba, what they might say is 
The world has changed. Everybody deals with interest nowadays, or fixed interest is a universal scheme these days. And as such, there is nothing wrong in dealing with riba. We say to them, do not be arrogant and try to justify your wrongdoing. Do not say riba is not haram, but humble yourself to Allah and seek forgiveness for your sin and confess your weakness and negligence in complying with his commands. This will keep you within the boundaries of Iman. But if you reject the command of Allah and argue that riba is not a crime, you may exit the pale of Islam and commit kufr, disbelief. You know, there are even, I, I, I know of a famous scholar who has tried to justify riba. And people quote him to people who use riba. I do not want to name the person. May Allah forgive him. It's very clearly forbidden in Islam. I have dealt with Islamic finance and economics. And, and I know a little bit about it, if not too much. That riba is clearly forbidden. It cannot be justified on any grounds. And there is also in, the, in this country or the Western countries, uh, there was a fatwa once. You know, in this country, there's no uh, Islamic finance. So for buying your house in which you will live, interest is allowed, riba is allowed. There was a fatwa like that. And this was years back. Nowadays, there is Islamic financing, so-called Islamic financing, I would say. Abu Umama radiallahu anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when Iblis had descended on the earth, he said, Oh Lord, you made me descend on the earth and you made me an outcast. Appoint for me a home. And this is an interesting uh, uh, tradition. Appoint for me a home. Allah said, it is bathrooms. <laughs> so that's why uh, the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is before we go to enter a bathroom, we say, Allahumma inni awzu bika min al wal khabais that we covered, uh, if not last week, the week before. Allahumma inni awzu bika min al wal khabais. Oh Allah, save me from men and women uh, shayateen, those who are in the bathroom. <laughs> I've tested it so many times. <laughs> when I don't say this, I have evil thoughts in my mind. When I say this, uh, the dua, and I enter, there is no thought in my mind. No evil thought. There is thought, but no evil thought. And Iblis said, make me an assembly gathering. Allah said, markets and shopping places. <coughs> That's why Rasulullah said in one narration that the best place, <coughs> the best place is masjid and the worst place is markets. And there's a dua for going to the market. And there's tremendous reward for reciting that dua. La ilaha illallah wa ta'u la sharika lahu yukhi wa yumit. Yukhi wa yumit bi adhil khair wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir. La ilaha illallah wa ta'u la sharika lahu. Lahu mulku wa lahu alhamdu. Yukhi wa yumit wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir. Bi adhil khair wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir. Something to that effect. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting story that uh, once somebody came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and said, Ya Rasulullah, this Sahabi, he often goes to the, the marketplace. And you said that this is the worst of places. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi called the Sahabi, why do you go to the marketplace so often? And that Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi I go to the market and I recite that dua. There's tremendous virtue in one tradition, you know, uh, it is mentioned that uh, the virtue is two million, two million. Uh, so I go and uh, uh, recite the dua and I come back. I go and recite the dua and I come back just for the virtue. Shaitan asked again, assign for me food. So this is when he's, he's, he's sent to the world. Assign for me food. And Allah said, every food on which the name of Allah has not been mentioned is your food. And that's why, you know, uh, the sunnah that uh, before we eat, we should, uh, we should uh, start with Bismillah or there is more specific 
Allah Allah Bismillah tawakkal tu ala Allah no not that Bismillah wala barakatillah that's when we forget along uh, line it's not coming to my mind right now okay and also we should wash our hands washing our hands is also mentioned among the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam before eating food He said, decide for me a drink. Allah said, wine, intoxicants. He said, appoint me a caller, announcer. Allah said, it is musical instruments. He said, make for me a kareen. Make for me a kareen. Kareen is shaitan who is, who is, uh, allotted to a person. Every person has a shaitan. So make for me a kareem. Allah said poetry. There's even mention about poets in the, Quran, in the Quran. That they say things that they mean. That they say things that uh, uh, have no basis in reality. Uh, something to the effect. Is mentioned about poets in the Quran. So, uh, Iblis said, decide for me a writing. Allah said, tattooing. Shaitan said, assign me a discourse, talk, chat. Allah said, lying. Then he said, appoint for me a messenger. Allah said, the fortune tellers and soothsayers. Magic is haram, oh, sorry. Uh, fortune telling is haram. Soothsaying is haram in Islam. Magic is haram in Islam. Shaitan said, decide for me a hunting means with which I can hunt, trap people. He said, woman. So that is the end. Uh, some additional considerations. We'll start with that in the next uh, halakha. And then some do's and don'ts from the Quran. That would be the end of this series, inshallah. So we pray, pray for ourselves. Pray for uh, our relatives, our friends, our well-wishers, our neighbors, people of the world, or uh, forgiveness of Muslims for the hidayat of mankind, or people who are in the grave, Muslims who are in the grave, our friends, our relatives, most of all, we seek guidance from Allah and protection from nafs and shaitan and the waswa and the, uh, the attractions of dunya. Allahumma amin, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Jazallahu anna Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma'ahu wa ahu. Bismillah al-lazhi la yaduru ma'asmi shayin kin al-tabirafi samayi sabi'il alim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yamid-Din, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihtina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Lazeen An-Amta Alayhim, Ghairil Maktubi Alayhim, Walad-Tawalleen. Ameen. Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Subhanallahi wa bihamdi adada khalki wa riza nafsi wa zinata arshi wa midada kalimati. اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت عليك توكلت وأنت رب العرش الكريم ما شاء الله وما لم وشاء لم يكون ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أنا وأن الله على كل شيء قدير أن الله كذا حتى بكل شيء علما 
اللهم اني اعوذ بك من شر النفس ومن شر كل دابه انت اخذ بناسياتها ان ربي على صراط مستقيم ربنا اننا سمينا منادي اينا دي للايمان انا ربكم فامن ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا وسيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الابرار ربنا واتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تحزن يوم القيامه ان لا تخلف الميعاد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار اللهم أسألك إيمانا كاملا يقينا صادقا علما نافعا رزقا واسعا عملا صالحا حياة طيبة دعاء مستجاب لسانا ذاكرا قلبا خاشيا رزقا حلالا طيبا شفاء من كل داء اللهم أسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استأذاك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ मुसलमान शक्तिशाल्ला प्रत्येक पदे अन्या भूल तुम इबादत करते गए घाटती परम करुणार सन्तुष्टि सहकारे करते तौफिक दान करो अल्लाह तुम हबीबे भलोबा अंतरे दान करो अल्लाह सर्वोत्तम गुणे गुणान्वित करो अल्लाह क्षतिकर पृथ्वी तुम आखिरा दान करो अल्लाह पृथ्वी क्षति हेफाजत करो नफ्सर थे हेफाजत करो हेफाजत करो शैतान धोखा थे हेफाजत करो प्रति मुहूर्ते हेफाजत करो हाथ धरे कबर पर शेष मुहूर्ते शयान चेष्टा कर मुहूर्ते चेष्टा कर शेष मुहूर्ते शयान चेष्टा कर आल्ला चेष्टा प्रतिहत करो आल्ला कलेमा सह जाते पृथ्वी थे जो पारि आल्ला तुम्हारे सर्वोत्तम व्यवहार कबरे हासरे दाखिल होते सर्वोत्तम व्यवहार जो पे आत्मयन पारा प्रतिबीशी विश्वबासी विभिन्न पाला मुसीबते तुम आजब लिप्त तुम्हें जत खन पर्त तुम्हारे माफ चाहब तुम्हें आजाद दीवान तुम प्रिय हबीबर उम्मत अल्लाह तुम्हार बंदा अल्लाह तुम्हें रक्षा करो हेफाजत करो समस्त मानुष के हेदायत करो अल्लाह माफ चावार तुफिक दाओ अल्लाह सरल पथ प्रदर्शन करो अल्लाह तुम तक रहमत द्वारा घिरे फेलो अल्लाह माघ फेर द्वारा घिरे फेलो अल्लाह हेफाजत करो अल्लाह के प्रत्येक मानुष जरा कष्ट मध्य विभिन्न भाव कष्ट मध्य तक तुम्हें फिर
দান করো এবং যা কিছু থেকে পানা চাওয়া উচিত ছিল আল্লাহ আমরা পানা চাইতে পারি নাই আল্লাহ তুমি তোমার তরফ থেকে পানা পানা দান করো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কোন মাবুদ নাই তুমি ছাড়া কোন রক্ষাকারী নাই তুমি ছাড়া কোন রহমকারী নাই আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কোন পথ প্রদর্শক নাই আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কোন শক্তি নাই আল্লাহ তুমি তুমি আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি তুমি আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি তুমি ও আল্লাহ আন্তের আমাদের এই ইহকাল সুন্দর করো পরকাল সুন্দর করো ইহকাল যাতে ধ্বংস না হয় পরকাল যাতে ধ্বংস না হয় আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে প্রত্যেকটা মুহূর্তে তুমি হেফাজত করো আল্লাহ তোমার কাছে আমরা সমর্পণ করছি আত্মসমর্পণ করছি আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে তোমার বানিয়ে নাও আল্লাহ আমরা চাই আর না চাই আমাদের নষ্ট চাই না আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে তোমার বানিয়ে নাও আল্লাহ রবিবারে দশটার সময় বাংলাদেশ হবো আল্লাহ তালা তৌফিক দেন সবাই সবার জন্য দোয়া করি ফেরেস্তাদের দোয়া পাবো সালাম আলাইকুম আলাইকুম আসসালাম